there guys she's only here well i thought i'd uh, better pull my finger out and um continue to work on this cute little snail so um i haven't really done any since i've left kareen's we were working on here doing a few little bits and pieces so i might do a little bit more um stitching on it you can sort of see what i've done here so i'm only going to do the one side i may may even just put you know maybe tack this on there on that side just to sort of and maybe do some um just some pistol stitch on there so um if you remember like here i've still got a um you know like draw around that it's from this gorgeous little book and i've got my little my little thing here so i'm just going to do it was the snail and the little helper here we go helpful snail very cute so um i thought i'd better finish stitching it and maybe um work on it a little more and get it stitched up and made because i don't think it'll take too long so what you do with this is just stitch on the line and then leave that bit open you need to stuff it so that's what i'm going to do with that piece so put that over there put my book away i've actually got i thought oh where are we so that's a bit that i'm probably going to be showing because it's going to go that way anyway it's been sitting in a um I'm just actually thinking if by the time that's the other way it this probably is the wrong way are you serious oh well, well I might have to do a bit of work on both sides then eh um okay so I've got me my blue blue skeins out and I thought I found this I was making some packs that had some um of these in a different color but maybe I can put that on there one of the corners so on this one um, I could probably cover that piece and just have it coming off to one side so I'll stitch that down since I've got those pieces and I got these from Corinne so it's got that on that side maybe do this on this side And on here, um, put that there. I'll probably, do I need to go in a? I'll go in a tad. There we go. So I might. I really quite like this, and it's got a real nice variegated thing. So. Um, where's my, here it is, my chenille 22 needle, I'll just grab that, okay, and use this, so, where are we, some pieces, so how are we all going? I thought I'd, I'd better look and I noticed this is pre-taped and when I looked up the videos this morning I noticed that Corinne uh, was working on this and Tia um, has worked on I think that they finished theirs <laughs> uh, and I'm still plodding along like a little snail okay so what we'll do I don't want to go too overboard I just want to get it done to be honest so we'll start in the middle this is what's the beauty of having this pattern because it's already done for you um, we can work on it you just start in the middle It'll get done pretty quick. 
and move that over. I'll do it just a couple. So I'm going to come in here and um, work a little bit more on my woodland quilt, which I probably will still do, but I thought I'd better get this guy done because he'll be a cute, cute little helper sitting on top of my my little thing over here this is what the beauty of having a variegated thread is because it's going to be a different color sort of still in those tones but it'll change color a little bit here and there oh don't not Oh, just hate it when it does that. Yep. There we go. And then it ends up being a bigger than normal knot, but oh well. We'll go over this way. I really do like this fabric. I think it's really quite nice. Too many things on the go is my trouble. But one bite at a time. I'm not going to stress about it. Not good for my health. So... And I'm really enjoying doing that um, autumn wool felt collage. Oh, such beautiful colours and fabrics. It's just beautiful. Must be the side. I think the reason why I've not finished doing this is because... Um, I've got to get on the sewing machine. I mean, it's set up there, but this room is such a mess. Sometimes your studio reflects how you're feeling. <laughs> There's stuff everywhere. Oh my goodness, it's just hard to get on top of stuff sometimes. Okay. Yeah, I really loved how the other girls snail turned out it is really really cute and i had a lot of fun doing the video while i was at corinne's with with the girls and a couple of the videos uh, i miss my little buddy we do still yap on the phone and do you know on messenger and all that kind of stuff only a phone call away sometimes we'll just sit and stitch oh yabbering away like you're there next to her on the table okay now I'm wondering I might come in with a bead or something because I think that'll look nice that's got the French knot on here with this maybe I can do that come back in and just do a little French knot and that way it'll tie that in so I'll finish that off See, look at that that's really pretty There we go. I've been really enjoying watching um, Jennifer uh, Jennifer Colston or however you pronounce her name. Um, her videos, little snippets. It's really good. It really makes your book come to life. Um, I mean, I've got the book, which is great, but it's nice actually seeing someone do it in person. So, going to be super boring. And do this again. Um, 
just to get it done. Come on. Yep. Oh my goodness, I am really quiet today. got a full tummy just being out with my hubby it is um on the weekend and he's been wanting to try our starbucks here he's been wanting to try a pumpkin spice latte um because it's something because starbucks is you know like an american brand and we do have one here so we thought we'd try because it's a a fall drink I suppose and it is fall over there but not here it's spring but we get theirs and he said oh look you know I want to want to see what the you know what the hype's about and this iconic drink um, and it's one of those ones you either love it or you hate it we didn't try the hot one because it's spring here and it's actually um, a little was well, today's a bit of a warmer day so we tried the Frappuccino, which is still all the flavours and everything, but it's a colder, a colder drink, and it is nice. I mean, I knew I would like it. I think I had one last year in the hot drink, and I quite liked it because I I love um, the spices they use in pumpkin pie. It's beautiful, you know, the nutmeg and cinnamon and all that kind of stuff. So I knew that I would like it, but. The frappuccino is almost like a thick shake and then I had something to eat for lunch as well so feeling a bit full <laughs> so. okay. now I'm just wondering what I do on these I like them whether I do a um, a stem stitch, I mean I can do the backing stitch, but a stem stitch might thicken it, make it thicker. Maybe I do this one here in wool, since I've done that one in wool. But I quite like having the different variations in colour. I think that looks good. Yeah, the all three of the um, snails turned out rather different. They were all um, Tia did the more like crazy patchwork style, um, and Corinne sort of did it in neutral colours. Really liked the ones, you know. She sort of layered it. It was very different. And then I picked something with the solid fabric, but something that I knew that I could embellish. Um, I just looked at this and thought yeah this it would be really good to stitch over the top so it gives you three three different variations of the same thing which is really good that's what's happening on my um, my retreat for next year I've given a few people um, like Corinne's got one as well as my piece and I'm doing my piece and I had another friend do it and so I've got a few different styles so that when they're hanging up people can pick you know they get their kit and the fabrics and all that kind of stuff but they can choose how to do it and one of them's pretty much all embroidered um, but uh, you know it's, it's quite quick because you can either make it into a lot of work which is what I'm doing and Corinne no surprise there um or you can do what she just has done like almost shishiko embroidery over the top of it and hasn't left the windows as they are um, put a bit of lace around and you know it's something that that is one that you could probably finish during the retreat whereas the way i'm doing it um probably not now i'll keep that out and 
So I go a lighter colour or a darker colour. I'm going to go darker colour. I quite like that. I like it. What's good about the chenille? 22. Um, good size eye for both the the um, pearl eight and the Appleton wolves. Okay. So what we're going to do is we'll just, I might just start here and then these ones here I might make into a little, um, like a small lazy daisy. And then we'll, that might do a stem stitch. Gives it a bit more 3D element to it, I think. Sort of remind me of like blueberries or boysenberries, sort of a, a type of berry. <laughs> but, okay, and then go down, that'll get done nice and quick, and then come up here. Oh, I like that. Gives it a real 3D element. I'm busy rearranging and cleaning up my lounge room at the moment because I need to make room. We're getting a new um, sofa, which won't... I won't get until November, which is annoying, but um, yeah, I've got to make it and ship it over yet, so um, my husband works in a thrift shop and he gets furniture and stuff in there all the time, and I'm like, I'm so sick of getting second-hand stuff, <laughs> so it'd be nice, I've always gotten um, a lot, well, the one that the cat has scratched a bit, and it's probably lucky. Um, that it was second hand because uh, if it was something I paid a lot of money for like this couch <laughs> um, I would be pretty devastated um, you know if she had have scratched it so um, and he's just got a, a two-seater so sofa and then our old sofa will go where the because I've got a, you know two-seater sofa there and a two-seater sofa there so the one that we've currently got which isn't bad and once again got from the op shop um but um and i'll just get i'll start and i've missed this one here i'll just get um a bit of it sounds you know your personal information i've got no butt it is as flat as a tack which is not great and so often I will sit and um, get, end up getting a number and I thought I just want a nice comfortable cushy chair that by the end of the night after watching a movie or whatever it is you're watching that you don't get out of your chair and you can't feel your butt and you've got you know it goes really sore right down into my back and so I thought if I want something good, I'm just going to have to pay for it, which I did. But it was on sale, which is good. One of my favourite shops is Early Settler, but I never, ever buy anything that is not on sale. I thought I'd do a back stitch on there just to... Because um, I think it would have been too thick doing it. So I'll come back up here. Um... So yeah, there you go. I'll have to maybe show a photo when it's yeah, it's really quite nice. It's made of linen and it's sort of a cream linen with a darker cream stripe through it. Um, sort of yeah, real classic. And then, you know, I tried all the seats in there and some of it, and I was like that, like Goldilocks, too too big, too hard, too. <laughs> um, 
yeah so no not that no I need something that's that I really like and I do love this one um, and it was a bit more expensive than the other ones of course but it was really nice and soft and comfortable so and we only need a two-seater because we haven't got the biggest lounge room I mean it's not tiny but it's not that big so um, and I was thinking maybe we can get a two-seater and then maybe get a one like a, a single chair where the other couch was just to add a little bit of space I just want the place to look a bit cosier and too much furniture causes clutter clutter causes stress so I think I need to get rid of some stuff which speaking of I have got I am going around I really need to clean my studio and I've got a lot of stuff that I've made over the years that are just sitting there which is it seems a bit of a waste actually while I'm here I wonder if I just do just a little straight stitch because it's because it is raw it might sit what was I saying oh. um, I am going to yeah I've got, I'm going to clean my studio and I've got lots of um, stuff that I've made over the years some things I want and are you know a bit extra special and I'm going to keep but I was thinking of putting stuff for sale of things that I've made um, over the years um, you know which I'll just put up for sale and at least maybe some of you guys can have some of my my stitching um, and some of my work and they make this time of the year it's really nice to buy for presents so if you remember those mushrooms that I made out of you know a yo-yo and I've got the um, the pattern on Etsy um, and I made quite a few of them I made probably about five or six mushrooms and then I've got three Christmas trees well I'm keeping the Christmas trees and one of my mushrooms but then I've got four that I will probably put on my website so keep an eye out for that sort of stuff um, I don't want to particularly you know going oh here's a new thing so I'll just put stuff on my website I might advertise it on my Instagram um, which my Instagram name is Susanna E 1969 so and that go down and so I'll probably put photos and bits and pieces on my Instagram so I'm gonna go here because it's close and I've still got it see that looks really good and just having that straight still gives that texture but not too thick okay so I'll just go here. Yeah, I think just having the straight and not little um, French knots is all right. I mean, not lazy daisies. So yeah, there you go. I've got um, and because I mean not they're just one-off pieces. I'll list them individually, um, but. I mean if you're gonna buy more than one I can combine postage um, and you know I always look it's a, I know it is a real pain for you guys but I will charge what I get charged and um, I will refund if it's too much um, I also in that I take into account what um, PayPal or the strip you know credit card takes out of my my earnings as well because I do so after that um, then I will refund that's why sometimes you'll get you know ten dollars or fifteen or sometimes even eight um, dollars back into whichever account you like your PayPal account or, or back on your credit card um, and if you don't get anything back well it's obviously cost what you have been quoted <laughs> 
so because it um, well, isn't cheap but um, yeah I'll just put a like a base amount and then uh, for Australia it's three dollars per item more so that's you get the, the say you know it's twelve dollars or eleven dollars and then three dollars more and then generally overseas it is $27 and then $5 more per item. So more often than not, I have to refund more for overseas, except for England. They're always dearer than anywhere else. Um, I put $27 and it actually cost me $27.60. So every time I post um, to England, it always costs me more. But I don't get a lot of um, people buying from England. I've got the odd loyal customer and subby watcher. Actually, I'll do these and then I'll probably finish off and get another one. So, there you go. There you go, a bit of an update on how things work on my website. I try and be fair um, to people because I know we are living in a time where it's, you know, the price of the cost of living is so expensive and you guys overseas are really lucky because when you buy it in Australia because our monetary you know income is like, like our the exchange rate is really good for you but bad for us like when I went overseas it cost me an absolute fortune um you know to be with the exchange rates especially in England like it's half price if, if you see it for $50, you'll get it for pretty much £25. So it's pretty cheap. And that includes postage as well. Like if the postage is $27, it'll be, um, you know, £18 or whatever it is. Yeah. So, and in America as well, nice and cheap. Canada, everywhere. Except for us when we buy anything and i love all the stuff in england and i want to buy it but it costs me like if it's 50 pounds it's going to cost me a hundred dollars <laughs> yeah, and that's just for the item and then you pay the postage and then not on top of that they charge you a tax you've got to be kidding me yeah everybody wants their chunk of change don't they so yes that's why I was really happy to go to see Debbie from Doll's House Vintage. I love her stuff. And um, I was able to, you know, see her beautiful studio. She's actually making a new studio, which should be nearly finished by now, I think. Um, yeah, such a lovely lady. Really nice. And where she lives, oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. In Dorset. Beautiful place. So, yeah, I do love her stuff, but it's just it's so expensive. It costs me, and if I buy one thing that she's put on for £27, by the time I pay it for it and get the extra charge and blah, 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 it costs me about $110, which is pretty sad. Yeah. So I'm lucky enough to live in victoria and just seem to have a knack for being in the right place at the right time even though we don't have as old of fabrics as they do over in france and england and europe um we still have some good good fabrics like sanderson's and we get the cath kids in then and um you just got to be at the right place at the right time I've actually got some, I just went out with a friend um, who I met at the, on the Paris trip and um, she's a, she's an old, you know, older lady. I sort of just like, I want to be you when I, when I grow up. She is amazing. She's 80 years old and she went to the France trip with us and, um, and then she went on there to go to Morocco and Scotland and everything. So she's on her own which is awesome so I actually quite like that look on this side it looks really cute um, and so I went 
uh, you know, I thought I hadn't, she actually lives in, um, you know, about 50 minutes away from where I am. So at least she's in the same state. And where she lives, I, I used to live, that's where I met my husband in Castlemaine, um, Newstead's just a little bit of outside of Castlemaine, and it was close to Malden. And Malden is a, like a heritage listed town. And um, all that, like, if you actually lived there, it would be a real pain because you had, you know, got all these council things. Yet the front of your house and everything on the outside needs to be painted in heritage colours and everything like that. So, um, yeah. Anyway, um, it's just gorgeous, you know, really nice town. And it's really bustling on the weekends, on the Saturday and the Sunday. A bit, bit different when you live there. It's really quite nice. Real country town. Um, and I did a, we did live there for about three months. I call it my live-in holiday. The house was, the house um, was really quite old, but it had an outside toilet, but the gardens and the area was like botanical. And I had a little wrens hopping around. It was just beautiful. But then oh, the actual house itself, and I was trying to toilet train my youngest son at the time. It was a nightmare. So we only lived there for, for three months, but I still... Loved that time that we lived there. It's really funny, even though it was an old house and and all that kind of stuff. It was just the area and the oh, it was just beautiful. Um, anyway, where am I going with this? Well, I went to go and visit, and I said, "Oh, well, you live fairly close to Malden." I said, "Do you know that Malden has a a French shop that she um she goes to France, gets all this stuff and." You know, gets lace and gorgeous bits from France. And she said she didn't know that. And I'm like, well, it's beautiful. And it's only down the road from her place, like probably 15 minutes. And she went to go, she needed to get some wool from the wool shop, which I went in there and got some wool too. Um, but I got this beautiful piece. Um, it was, it's linen and it's a runner. And it's in pinks and peaches and creams and it's quite old because it was sort of like really faded in one spot and sort of a bit more brighter in the other so um oh just gorgeous it's beautiful and i mean it wasn't cheap like they, they never are but i get that she's had to pay a lot of money i said at least you know that i understand why that these things are expensive because you pay a lot of money for these but but when you're cutting it up and making it into kits you can sort of justify spending a little bit more but it makes it hard cutting it up i can tell you but um so i've uh, including the wool that i bought from the the shop made up of like i had enough to make eight of these kits and oh my goodness they are beautiful they're so beautiful and i've got this wool on the top which is really thick and it looks like fairy floss it's just beautiful so it's gonna be a just a you know like a slow stitch inspired kit and i've got um while i was there my friend had this 1928 yo-yo quilt that she had and so i've put in beautiful really i mean they're nearly 100 years old the jolly yo-yos um yo-yos in there and beautiful lace and um matching fabric some are old some are new but it's a real feast for the eyes and i just love it i just loved making up these kits because i'm like oh they're so pretty and the wool is a like this cottony cottony fabric so um yeah well I'll, maybe i can probably show you guys but i sort of don't I, I don't want to be always having stuff on here where i'm showing stuff that's on my shop but that's I mean it's the only way i can seem to advertise it but um yeah, gorgeous so i've only got eight of those but um that's just how it goes and that's what what i want to be known as you know you've just got 
beautiful slow stitch, stitch kits and now because I'm doing Fleur Woods course and you know watching Jennifer and all this I'm getting a little bit more into the sort of textile art type of thing so I'm trying to make up kits that are going to do that like my autumn one I just think it is beautiful it's about texture and all that kind of stuff but I don't do it I love fleur wood stuff but oh my goodness I just don't have time to make it like how she makes it she really feels like if this was a fleur woods piece all this would be all filled in completely filled in like um which it is beautiful and i want to do it because i've paid the money for the course and i'll i've got my you know doing a smaller piece and then i'm doing a major piece and i've got my bits and pieces out for the bigger collage but it's definitely going to be something that's going to be done in the background and i think as in for myself and that's the whole point it's the whole point of her courses you know it's it's about it's called joyful embroidery you know enjoying the journey rather than having to um you know just be in a hurry to do everything and try to do everything like what i'm doing um you know like like i really enjoy doing this but you sort of got to think when you're a youtuber you always on the go thinking of new things to make and sometimes lose the purpose of having joy in just creating and doing it for the love of it rather than okay what's next what's next so I've got to find like you know catch myself okay need to relax and have stuff for my channel but this is for me my um my piece my course and i will probably you know in future videos and even like that when that um piece that i'm doing now the autumn collage it's sort of a little bit like just being inspired by it but it's still very different because it's not going to be completely full um but you know you learn bits and pieces from doing these courses Le definitely learn a lot from um jennifer's stuff she's amazing and like she says in your videos you don't have to be perfect i'm like i like this girl okay oh, lady i should say I'm sure she wouldn't mind being called a girl. We're all girls at heart, aren't we? I really like the look of it on that side. Okay. I like that. I like that it's raised like that. Now, what I might do is... See this bit here rather than doing that because I haven't got a great deal. I might just stitch that down so that we've got something but I'm not going to be completely filling it okay maybe put it over so I'll just use a maybe a wool you see that's the perfect color for that just to go in and grab hold of it and you know we're going to be going over this again when we stitch it so when I sew the pieces together it'll start sew around that and then I'll just come in here maybe move it over a tad there we go don't mind not having the full piece on there because I've got half of the pieces on there. I'll just pin this down here. 
There we go. I like it. It will probably make more sense once I've, um, you know, once it's being sewn together. I think it'll look really nice. I'm wondering whether I do just because that's just a feather stitch. Who knows? I think that would be nice. Can't see it in here, so there's no point. Not in there. But maybe there, those, that, and that. Maybe in that one. Hmm. And then just do the the center it will on that one, that one, that one, that one. Probably even put a button on there. And then do that one. And then stitch that one while I've got this wool out. So there you go. Well, the next video, I'm going to probably just continue doing some stitching in the background. Just been stitching and napping today. I might, I might do some wool on this one because I have wool on that one. Um, yeah, it's just something that I'm working on. It's just background stitching really so nothing too exciting for you you're just listening to my my stories and yapping in the background I'll put that away over there I love this that blue I've used it in a few bits and pieces and I've got a little like a rabbit that I did for 2020 while we we're in COVID and it was had some of this stuff in the corner Love it. I really like it. Just adds a bit of texture. Okay, so where are we? Yeah, it's really coming along. It sort of looks all blurred, I suppose, at this point, but you can see on the back just how much it's, I've done. 42 minutes. Oh my goodness. Little Miss Yappy. So, yeah, thought I'd just film this and um, just yap and talk to you about a little bit of everything okay guys thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you in the next video i hope you enjoyed my this can be a sit and sew with suits <laughs> something me yapping in the background okay thanks for watching bye